There we go. I'm going to zoom you guys up really big so I can see you. Okay. Here we go. Has everyone got their Chromebooks ready? Awesome. Does everyone know how to use Google? Right? I want you to go to Matua Kukara. Go to Google. Right? And we're going to search this together. In your Google, I want you to type in P. Five. The number five. Dot. The full stop. J. And S. P5. Dot js and then press enter or to search and you should get let me get my nice cool drawing tools out we should get this one here can everyone see that one there home p5.js can you see that oh i wonder if i can zoom in there we go My drawing tools. All right. I would like you to click on that one. Has everybody found that one? I kapai. So we're looking for this one here, and I just want you to click on it, and then you should come to this page here. I'll wait for everybody here. I'll wait for a thumbs up from everyone so I know everybody's here so we can get started. Cool. All right. Here we go. So, welcome. This is p5.js. This is a coding, uh, a bit of coding software that's going to let us draw art using text, using words, right? So, we're going to put words into the computer and it's going to draw a picture for us, right? So, let's get started. I'm going to zoom in again so it's easy to see, right? I would like you to scroll down and look for this button here. Start creating with P5 editor. Ooh. And then left click, and it's going to open this editor here. I'll make sure I'm nice and zoomed up. All right, so let's have a look over here. Let me get my drawing tool. This box over here, this is where we're going to write our code. We're going to type our words. It's okay if you don't understand what that means now. I'm going to talk about it so that we know. All right. Over in this area, this is where our computer is going to draw our picture with our text. We're going to draw shapes like circles, squares, triangles, and every other shape we want, lines. And maybe we'll even make it move around. All right. So let's start. We've got these two things here, right? This is called a function. You don't need to know what that means yet. We're going to ignore this one. This one just creates this box here that we're going to draw in. All right? The one that we want to use is this one, draw. Can everyone see draw? Right, draw. So, computer, when it sees this one here, draw, it's going to draw a picture over here. All right, so let's start. Let's draw a picture. Let's do it together. All right, I'm going to write it in. So, everyone get your mouse. Get your mouse. You guys have touch pads, eh? Yeah. And I would like you to click right here next to background. How's that? Does that look good on your screen, Matua Jeff? Is it nice and zoomed in? It's hard because I've got a really big screen, so it looks funny on mine. All right. And then I want you to press the enter button. Oh, my background's blocking it. Press enter. Do you all have enter on your computer? All right. And it'll give you a space. All right. And we're going to draw, we're going to draw a word. All right. And the word we're going to use, I'm going to show you how this works soon. We're going to draw this word here, circle. Does everyone know what a circle is? Yes, of course you do. All right? We're going to draw a circle. Now, the computer doesn't know what a circle is because computers aren't smart. We have to tell the computer exactly what to do. We have to tell the computer what color it is, how big it is, and where to draw it on the screen. 
right? Because he, computers are made for people, and we've got to tell the computer exactly what to do. If I don't put in the right instructions, it's not going to draw a circle, right? So let's start. Uh, go back to my editor. Ooh, where was I? Here. Nope. Wrong one. Here. All right. So let's start. Let's spell the word circle together. C I R C L E. Cool. Did it draw the circle? I want you to go and press the play button. Top of the screen. Press this button. Did it draw the circle? No, it didn't draw the circle. That's because we haven't told the circle, the computer, what a circle looks like, how big it has to be, right? And where to draw it on the computer, onto the screen. So we've got to give those instructions now, right? So to give these instructions, we're going to look for, we're going to make sure at the end of our circle, our pointer is at the end of the circle, and you're going to put in a bracket. Do you know what a bracket is? No, so you might need your teacher's help. Can everyone find the key shift? Shift. Yep, press and hold the shift. And then press the nine, the number nine. You should have something that looks like this. Did that work? All right, there we go. I'm getting some, some thumbs, All right? These are called brackets. In programming, they've got a really funny name called parentheses. That's a, that's a too long word. I'm not using that word. I'm just going to call them brackets. That's what sensible people call it. <laughs> cool. And inside of those brackets, we have to tell the computer where to put it and what size it needs to be. So on our screen over here where it says preview we have a big square called a canvas and on our canvas there are lots of little points called coordinates we have to tell the computer what coordinate to put the circle so i'm going to tell the computer to put it right here in the middle and i know that this is 400 long and 400 down. Does anyone know what half of 400 is? Oh, can you put it in the in the chat? I can't see my chat. Did you guess it as 200? Yeah, awesome. So yeah, half of 400 is 200. So I need to put, awesome. I need to put my circle at 200. So let's do that together. So we're going to click inside of our brackets. Click inside your bracket. And you're going to type 200, comma, Two hundred, so two hundred comma two hundred. Go back to our circle. That size. Another comma. Now we have to decide how big. You can make it as big as you want. You can choose this number. I'm going to choose fifty. All right. So I'm going to type in five zero. Oh, what happened there? Oh, can everyone see the circle that the computer drew?
So we can change this number, 100, and it's going to make our circle twice as big. We could make it 200, and it's going to make it really big. So I want you to pick a number at the end and find a number that you like for the size of your circle. Matua K. Hmm. Yes, Matua Jeff. Um, I can see that you've got uh, yours is just changing all the time, whereas mine is not. Ah, yes. Good, good catch, Matua Jeff. So for my one, it's already tagged this button here. So if you want uh, your one, because I think it makes you want to press this play button all the time, eh? If you press this button here, it will automatically update the code. So every time you make a change, it's going to show it over here. Good catch, Matua Jeff. Thank you. All right. There's one more thing we need to do to this code to finish it off. Do you guys know what a full stop is? All right. So code, we have full stops too, but they don't use a full stop like we use when we're writing, it uses a special full stop called a semicolon. A semicolon. And it looks like this. It's a full stop with a comma. All right? And that's just a programming thing. And you'll find it on your keyboard somewhere by the question mark. It has a colon and a semicolon. Oh, this is the colon there. All right? So that's a special full stop when we're coding. When we're coding with text. Cool. Does everyone manage to draw a circle? All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Who wants to change the color of their shape? Cool. Let's figure out how to do that. So... We have to do something different. So I drew the, the the circle first. But when we're coding, it does this thing called iteration. And that's just a fancy word for one step at a time. So when we go to our code, it does this one first. And then it does this line. And then it gets to the end and goes, oh, there's nothing then. Go back to the top. Do that line. Do that line. So it reads one line at a time. So if we want to color in our circle, we have to go back up to the background, click on it. So we have the, the little mouse input and press enter to create a space. Because we need to tell this, the computer to color in the circle first. And we're going to use some special code called fill. F-I-L-L, -L, fill. And just like we did with our circle, we have to press and hold the shift and press number nine to create some brackets. Now, we can do something special. P5.js can read words for basic colors like red, blue, black, orange. So now I want you to type in a color i'm going to type in red r-e-d uh oh i made a mistake right so when we make a mistake in code it's called a bug has everyone heard that word before a bug a bug, when we make a mistake in our code, it's called a bug. A bug is something that it's not quite right in our code, and we've got to go back and we've fixed it. Now, I purposely made a mistake here. For our colors, we have to use a special thing called a quote. Do you guys know what a quote is? A quote has two uh, lines like this. All right, but we're going to use a special one. I think they just call it a single quote. It's two little lines like that. And it tells the computer 
that what's inside is called a string. That's just another fancy word for word. A string. Well, you guys are getting a lot of technical computer words today. All right, so we're going to put in some quotes here and here. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to delete my word, and I'm going to press the quote button. It's next to your semicolon button that we used for our full stop. I'm going to zoom, I'll zoom right in so you can see it. All right, so see how I've got those two quotes there? If I write my word in there now, red, you can see that my circle now went red. Don't forget to put your full stop at the end with the colon, the semicolon. Did everyone manage to get their circle and color it in? Awesome. So don't forget you can choose any color you want. If you click on this little box, oh, something changed. What was that? It went from red and then when I clicked on this little box, I could pick any color. That's another trick. Why don't you have a go at that? Click on the little box next to your word and pick another color. Now we can choose any color we want for our circle. This number here is called a RGB number. Red, green, and blue. They're the three colors that help make up the light that we can see. And it works really well on our screens. Hmm, that's a bit funny, isn't it? Cool. Right, who wants to do another shape? Right, let's do another shape. So we're going to... Uh, bring our mouse down to the bottom of our circle and press enter again to create some more space. This time, I think we are going to choose a different shape. Let's do a square. All right, so we can practice a different shape. So I'm going to click on my square. All right, and it's going to tell me what we need to do. We're going to do a square. We've got to tell it where to go and what size it's going to be. All right, so first we have to set our color, eh? All right, so I want you to do it again. Fill. Bracket. Can anyone remember what goes inside our bracket? Quotes. We've got to put our quotes in. And then we could pick a different color. Blue. Don't forget, we've got to put in our semicolon to finish it off. Right now, we can't see anything, eh? Because remember, the code goes one step at a time. So we've said, make it our, our circle that color. Now make something blue. But we haven't told it what to make blue. So we're going to press enter again. And this time, we're going to type in the word square. You guys know how to spell square? S-Q-U-R. Oh, that's not how you spell it. <laughs> U-A-R-E. I'll zoom in nice and big so you can see it. All right, and don't forget, we've got to put in our brackets again. Now, 
we have to decide where it's going to be. So the last one, we put our circle in the middle of the screen. Now let's put our square at the top of the screen. So we can go ooh, 100, comma. Mm, let's go down 100, comma. All right, so now we've told it where we want it to be. And the next thing we could do is to tell it how big. So you just as any number you want to want to use, and I want you to play with this number. Our circle is 100. So for our square, I'm going to choose 50. Ta-da! And you should have a nice colored in square on your screen. Does everyone have their square? Awesome. All right. So you've learned and you've had a play with an adult programming language. You've figured out how to draw a shape using words, using just words. That's pretty cool. All right. And we've learned how to color it in. That's pretty impressive for year four. I'm very impressed. And I'm sure you could make all sorts of interesting uh, creations like faces. Yeah, with You could put in lots and lots of yeah. different boxes. Here's one, Matua Jeff, that I made before. This one lets you draw circles when you move your mouse around. Whoa, and if you that click, is cool. It colors it in. How do I find out how to do something like that or find other shapes? Yeah, that's like, a good question. If I want Jeff. to find a triangle. Yeah. If you want to draw some more shapes, when you go back to your home page, remember how we Google searched it and we found it? If we look for this word here, reference, this has all of the instructions on how to draw different shapes and to do the different code that we need, Matua Jeff. Ah, yeah. I think I saw a reference as well under the help menu yes. in the editor. So if I go there and click that, what happens? Oh, it opens up the reference in another tab. Yeah, I'll draw that for the kids to see. Let's have a look. So if you click on here, the help button. Oh, there it is there. You're right, Matsuo Jeff. If we... Oh, mine disappeared. If we click on the reference there, it opens up all the references. So in here, Tamarikima, this is where you can find all the instructions on how to code in p5.js. So if we scroll down, and we go down and down and down, and we find this one here that says shape, right? All of this code here, these are 2D shapes that you know. Squares, triangles, half circles, stars. They can all be made here. Now, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't say star and it doesn't say triangle. But inside of the code, it can show you how to make those. So if I want to know how to make half a circle, in programming, that's called an arc. An arc. So if I click on that, Matua Jeff, it opens up all of the examples that I need to know on how to make that shape. And look, if we scroll down, there's lots and lots and lots of different examples. So if I want to make a, oh, there's a good one there, half circle. And I can copy this. Did you know that, Matua Jeff? No, I didn't. Oh, but I, I don't have that. to write this. If That's I cool. press copy... And I copy that and press the copy button and I go back to my editor and I create a new line. I can paste control V that code and there it drew the half circle for me. I can delete all these instructions. Now, it looks like a lot of hard code, but it's it's pretty easy. If you go back to the reference, we can go down and it tells us 
what goes into it. And that looks pretty hard. But all it's saying is where to put it, how wide and tall it is, and where it should start and stop. Yeah, it's a pretty tough shape. I'd be very impressed if you can work that one out. Kapai. So in references, I know that's where we can go and we can have a look at all these different bits of code. This is pretty advanced stuff. So I'm very impressed that you've been able to keep up. Awesome. Well, Matua Jeff, I think we should hmm. go and make uh, an e-card now. Oh, that's a good idea. I hadn't, had, I hadn't even thought of that. We could that we could do both, both at the same time. So, some of you, if you want to make an e card, uh, you can. But if you want to keep drawing with p five dot js in the text editor, you can do that as well. So you can just experiment with the reference and all that, um, all those different shapes, and fill them with different colors. Okay, well, in that case, maybe I should share my screen and show you what I'm going to do. Yeah, can't um, buy. that sounds great. Then they get to see both the work. They get to yeah. do both. And you might like this. Let me make sure I've got the sound on because my e-card. Um, so I've got this thing called CoSpaces. And I'll get it for you as well. Um, and if I search in the gallery for my card, where is it? Maybe I need to call it an e-card. E-card? E-hyphen card? Maybe I didn't call it a card. Hang on a tick. Let's tick leap. Maybe it's been hidden because it was so popular. No, but it is on Remix, so it shouldn't be. Right, where is it? Mm -mm. Here we go. Make an animated card. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So this one says happy birthday, but we're actually, we can make a, a happy holiday card. So you might like to say Merry Christmas, or if you, or, or say have a great summer, and you can make it for somebody else. And we don't have to use um, a dinosaur. We could use something else. We could use other animals. So um, I guess what we have to do first is go find co-spaces so let me stop my share and i'll share another screen hmm. i'll go here and open a new tab right so open up a new tab don't close down your tab with p5.js editor because we want to keep that open click the plus button to open a new tab and search for co-spaces so C O S P A C E S Co spaces. Let me see if I can make this a bit bigger. Let's go full screen. Co spaces. So if I and then hit enter, and that will show you, you should see this result here co spaces for kid friendly 3D con creation and coding. So click that one. All right. Um, now, Ms. Kim, I'm wondering, you haven't set 
this up. Have you registered for this? No? I, well, I can't hear your microphone. So give me a, a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thumbs down. Okay. No, that's okay. That's quite all right. I'll give, I'll set up a classroom and we'll work something out so that I can share things with you. Okay. What I want you to do, Tamariki Ma, is click on the register button. Guys, click on the register button. Oh, so the orange one, once you've got there, and it should come up and say, create an account as a student or a teacher. Now, obviously, you are a student, so you click student. Click on students, guys. And then it says your teacher will give you a, um, a code. So that's what I'm going to give you now. Let me just go and find the code for you. And this is a class code that, okay, so the class code, you can see it here, B, J, 8, E, and Q, B, J, 8, E, and Q. And I'll, I'll put it in the chat as well. If I can find the chat. Where's the chat? Here's the chat. I'll put it in the chat just in case you have some others. So once you've entered that and click continue, you come to this screen. And this is where if you have an email, a school email address, if you use Google, you yes. can click sign in with Google. All of you, press sign in with Google. Yes. And you can see here I've got lots of accounts and I'll click one of them. Oh. Your school account, don't be my own, don't click your home account, click the school account. Anybody having any issues? Any no. problems? What I'm going to do just quickly is assign a task, set an assignment for you in your in the class. So let me just find that. I will search. Okay. Use as assignment, set for hour of code, and create an e card. And I'll say change the change the e card to suit your person. Okay. All right, so I've set it and hopefully it should turn up in a moment here. There it is. Can you all see this under classes? If you go to classes, yep, yep some people can. Awesome. So click on create an e card. And it says change the e card to suit your person. So when I mean person, I guess 
some of the reasons why we i mean why do why do we give cards to people any ideas hands up if you've got an idea your kayakor can pick you what else, Lois? To give them a birthday card. <laughs> what else? Any others? Your name? Apology card. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so usually we give cards to communicate something, uh, a feeling, or we want to thank somebody or tell them we love them or appreciate them. So that's something that you could do. You could, and I guess what you need to do first is think about who you want to make this card for. It could be some, it could be a friend. It could be somebody in your Fano. So pick someone. And have a think, have a quick think about what you would like to say to them. And then when you're done, click that little X in the top and you'll enter this world. This is our editor and you'll see that there are some instructions here. Now, when I click, I'm using a mouse. It might be a little bit different for you. There are different ways of moving around in this editor. And when I click, I'm kind of moving all around it. I'm circling it. See, I'm going behind. This is called orbiting. Now, if I hold down the space bar, and it, again, it might be different for you, I can move forwards and backwards. I can get really close to this dinosaur. Okay. And if you have a, a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can zoom in like this. But if you're on a Chromebook, you might be able to use two fingers on the right-hand side of your trackpad and go up and down. And that might allow you to zoom in and out. So... Let's first of all um, click on play up in the top right hand corner. If you click play, you'll see the results. And there is a mute button. There's a little mute icon in the top right hand corner here. So that it, you can mute yourself so that we're not getting lots of music going. On the left side, in the top left corner, there's a back arrow. So we can click that to get back to our editor. All right, so we've got 10 minutes to get through this. But because there are instructions here, um, we can work through those instructions too. So first of all, I want you to let's let's maybe um, change the message. Okay, so it says change the message, double click the message. So click it twice really quickly, and it pops up these two boxes. And in the top box, it says text. Yeah. So I can click that and change it from happy birthday. And I'm going to say, have um, <laughs> uh, have an awesome holiday. That's what I'm going to say, because I have someone in mind <laughs> that I'm going to make this card for. Now, also, if I click on, if I double click on that box, if I tap it twice really quickly, or if I right click, you'll see that there's something called material. And this is where we can change the color. 
So if you think of material as like the clothes you're wearing, your clothing has um, a texture and it has a color. So I'm going to make this purple because it's like my shirt. In fact, I can customize the color. So I'm going to make it a OMG tech color. There we go. So now it's purple. And also, if I click and hold hold the the mouse down and move the trackpad, I can move this around. I can also lift it up and down. See these four icons here that appear above it? The bottom one, if I click it and hold it and drag it up, it makes it bigger or smaller. This one makes it go round, so I can change it like that. And I can also lift it up by clicking and dragging this icon. Okay, so I've changed the text. Now, the person that I'm thinking of, um, I don't actually want to use a dinosaur. I want something else. So I'm going to choose a different animal that I know that they like. So to do that, I'm going to go down to the bottom left corner. Let me see if I can find the annotation down here. Whoops. Bad annotation. And I'm going to click library. And then click animals. And I'll get... I will get a land. Oh, I'm going to get a bear. I'm going to make a giant bear. I'm going to get rid of my dinosaur just by pressing delete or by double clicking and pressing delete. So now I've got a bear. I could also have a unicorn. Actually, I might have a giant unicorn instead. And actually, I can have more unicorns. I can even double click and go duplicate. So now I have two unicorns, three unicorns, lots of unicorns. So you can fill up your en entire space. I could also put some grass around for them to play on and some trees yeah. drag some trees in here oh that's a big tree i'll put that in there i'll put that over there and if i click on environment it's a big shock. It's a big shock. down the bottom here and click edit oh. i can change the background so you can change the the scene by going to environment then clicking edit so you could have a space themed e-card that might be something that the person you're thinking of is really into Okay, so let, let me see what this looks like now. That looks pretty cool. Okay, now finally, I'm going to change the music. Now to do that, I need to go to upload. Oh, actually, hmm. And go to sound. Now I can see that there are three different sounds here. And if I hover over the sound, 
and press the play button. That's the little... So that's the one that's playing at the moment, but there's also this one. And this one. So I quite like that one. I want to use that one, which is called, it looks like Kids Playing. Now, to play that one, let me just check my code. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just playing in the background. Okay. So to use that as my background sound, I click on the three dot menu that's here on the kids playing and go to set as background sound so I click that and now the background sound is set to kids playing so if I play So I really like that now, but there's more. We can do more. You can search it for images. So if you go to upload and images, there's a web search. So I could bring in, I could make this really unicorn themed and bring in images of unicorns or a gif of a unicorn i could put that and drag it in and make it really big So that was under Upload Images. You can also upload videos and you can upload other 3D models as well. Now, finally, there is one more tab I need to show you. And that's on the left side, just underneath the Home button. Now, everything in here is saved automatically. Okay. So you don't need to press save on anything. It's already saved. This left tab shows three different scenes. So you can, if you don't like that camera going around like that, there's two others that you can do. So there's one called move camera, which looks like this. And there's also a simple one that just looks like this. Now, when I'm talking about the camera, it I mean this thing right here. This is our camera. Oops. And this is a 3D icon of an old movie camera. And whatever this camera sees, the other thing is going to see. So if I shift this over here or over here, it will get a different view. So you can mess around with that. But I think we're pretty much, we're right on 12 o'clock now. So the final thing that I will do is show you how to share your space with a person, okay? So this is how you do it. Just let me find you all. Uh, I will need to order that by ooh, last login. Okay, here we go. So one, two, three. Okay, so now you should be able to 
share your space with somebody and i'll show you you should see just up the top next to the help menu a little share button yeah next to the help uh, yes i can click share and you could name you can name your your space i'll call mine um have a happy holiday and then it will say share unlisted which is means that it's only visible to the people that we give the link to or the special share code to click share unlisted uh, and this this publishes it to the world but nobody else can see it except the people that we share with share it with so to share it now to give it to somebody else we can click on this share button are you watching this and there's a couple of different options here we can get the link this is the link here and i can press the little copy button on the right hand side and then i can paste that into an email or send that to my teacher or you could if you have um, seesaw you could put it in seesaw Wait, how do I get mail? Like, how do I send people? So, to paste it in, you can either press Control and V, or you can right click and press paste like that. And that gives you the link, the location of your co-space. There we go. I want to go on Gmail and send this. Yeah. Yep. So you can open up Gmail and create a new email and then right click and go to paste and paste your share link um, into your email. Or you can put it in Seesaw or whatever you like, really. Send it to people. Any other questions before we close for the day? Any questions? Yeah. I'm a little off so I don't know like what to do. Sorry, I didn't hear what the question was. Can you repeat it? I'm a little off track, so I may need to help. How do you use the effects? No. Where are you lost? Which part? Oh, like, I don't know how to like, share and stuff. We can sort it out share. I know how to share it. Okay. As long as somebody in the class knows how to share, then you can, they can tell other people. So I'm hands up who saw how to share it and who thinks they can do it. Yep. So you've got at least one person in the class who will be able to help you, which is perfect. And, um, I will be in touch with you to make sure that you have access to all those um, spaces and I'll give you some details about how you can um, do the same thing so that you have control and can run things in the same way that I did today. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, room 15 is so privileged to have only us having two different sessions. <laughs> and room 15 would like to say thank you. You are most welcome. Thank you, Matua K, for sharing your amazing um, processing, your P5JS drawing skills. That was really yeah. cool to learn I'm about. I'm so impressed that... You guys were able to do that. Normally, that's for high school kids, but I thought 
I thought you guys did no problem. You were able to get through there, and I hope you actually made some shapes. And that's your first introduction to adult programming. That's really mm -hmm. cool. That's very cool. And we hope you all have um, uh, a very happy holiday. When do you finish school? Is it at the end of this week or next week? Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Oh, exciting. Ooh, not far That's away. That's very cool. Well, we're just going to close up with the closing karakia, right. which Matua K will give us, and then we'll say bye-bye, and we'll get a big wave. Okay. Uh, Matua here we K. go. Uh, kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa pauna mu te moana, hei huarahi mā tātou te rangi nei, aroha atu, aroha mai, tātou ia tātou katoa, haumia huie, tāikie. tāikie. Thank you everybody, you've been absolutely amazing. Big wave, thank you. Big wave. Thank you, have a good holiday. Thank you. Thank have you. fun, see you later. Bye. 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 Kakite.